in today's silliness. I do a bit of pondering, cut a bit of timber, and we ask the question, can he perform a perfect dismount? And welcome to the video. As ever, I'd like to say a big thank you to all you likers, watchers and subscribers. Because without you, well I'd just be talking to myself, wouldn't I? I'd also like to say a big thank you to you commenters. We've had some lovely comments come through over the last couple of weeks. I've been off last week, had a bit of a cold, come on. If you've got out to say, you've got any questions or even some suggestions, for things we can do on this channel, why don't you stick them in the comment box wherever YouTube's put it this week and I'll do my very best to get back to you. In today's video, we're going to finally try and finish off that roof box. Well, the timber bit anyway. It's been a long time coming and the weather and a stint of that lurgy has hampered my progress. So sit back and enjoy as we take you from the very first cut to testing the strength of Narrowboat Laura's newy new roof box. Here we are, pointy screwdriver pencil at the ready, and this is our roof box. Here you can see are the sides, there's some corner bracing, there's the bottom, and there is the cross members that the whole box sits on, and those sit on top of those sticky up bits on the roof of Narrowboat Laura. I have no idea what they are called, and I have done some research on it. Anyway, best crack on. Here's the materialist, some uh, 5b1, 4b2, and 2b1, with a bit of scrap 3b2 and a box of screws. That's all the materials we need. Quite an easy one, that. Here's the tools we'll be using today. I've got a saw for cutting the wood, tape measure for measuring it, pencil for marking it, an engineer's square, which is optional, you can use the saw. We've got a drill with a wood bit in for the pilot holes, uh, an impact driver for driving in the screws, and we've got some scrap 3b2 for marking the curves onto the 4b2. If you've not got access to a antique bandsaw that's a bit of a death trap, you could use one of these, a jigsaw with a wood blade. Right then, I suppose we should crack on. down these baseboards for the roof box using 50 millimeter screws and I'm using a 10 volt impact driver to drive them in. I've pre-drilled them already using the cordless with a little drill bit in. If you're going to use a pilot drill just make sure you get the right size drill bit and test it first on a bit of scrap timber to make sure. At this point I'd realised that the wind was ruining my air 
it was blowing it in my eyes and it was doing my head right in. So it's time for a bob hat. There we are. My hair is now fully protected from the ravages of the wind. As ever, the motto on the barely floating channel is measure twice, cut once and then hammer it into position. I'm going to use this off cut of timber to correctly position the side boards. I'm just making sure that I've got the correct amount of overhang either side. I'm uh, drilling a pilot hole for the screws. I don't really need two of these screws, they're quite expensive. But my little impact driver isn't that powerful, it's only the 10 volt one. go that's the first side piece fixed in place yeah this uh, measuring goes on for quite a bit One of the things I have noticed about working on an aeroboat is don't have to wobble about. Graceful, isn't he? Like a cat on a hot tin roof. difficult fixing this uh, board into position for one thing I was hanging over the side of the boat and at any moment I could have tippled head first into the canal offered this up into position I can uh, drill the pilot holes for the screws I could probably do with an extra pair of hands here. Sometimes you've just got to have a ponder about what you're going to do next. I've made a bit of a mistake with one of my cuts, so I'm going to have to do a bit of rejigging. He's taking his time pondering over this one. I've just offered up there the second layer of the side timbers and I'm going to use a red packer which is about 5 mil to achieve a gap between the side timbers just for good airflow. And at this point the camera battery ran out. 
so I swapped to my phone with the extra wobbly selfie stick. That length of 2B1, that's for the corners on the box. As you can see, I've got my first one in there. And it's also used as a brace in the middle where I did that wrong cut. Yes, even after measuring twice, I still cut a piece wrong. Now, you may all be thinking, oh, he's left-handed. Well, I'm not. It's the mirror image thing on the camera. If you look just above where he's sewing now, you can see that red packer that I'm using to make the gap between the layers on the side. So there we are, carefully and lovingly cobbled together. But she's not quite finished yet. I've decided that I'm probably going to uh, mitre those cross members on the ends there at 45 degrees. Well, I bet you're all wondering, how did I uh, do that lovely curve on that roof? Well, let me just show you. First thing I did was cut a little marking piece from a scrap bit of 3B2. And I'm going to use that as my guide for my pencil, which will drag across the roof. As you can see, I'm raising the cross members off the roof with some bits of 4B2. Um, and then I put the little block on its end there put the pencil against the timber and then drag it across the curve of the roof and that pencil just gives me a nice mark I didn't want to go too high the more I cut away the less strength I'll have left in the 4B2 now I didn't film actually cutting the uh, piece of 4B2 to the curve um, I used my father-in-law's rather antique and quite dangerous bandsaw to do that job um, and I shouldn't really film that sort of thing but He's from the age before health and safety, so there's not a right lot I can do. Um, as you can see from there, I've got a lovely gap just be, uh, above the roof there, between the timber and the roof. I don't like to have things resting on the roof too much because that paint gets quite soft. I think it's a, like a household paint, which hasn't gone really too well with the paint that's underneath. It's sort of reacted badly and it's started to crack and peel I would assume that it's been undercoated underneath that as well anyway enough of that as you can see I'd already marked the 45 degree, degree angle using uh, the saw there the hand saw I pulled the whole box across I would have done it beforehand but I hadn't quite decided on what I was going to finish with on those whether it was 45 degree or just rounding them off um, but as you can see I'm just using the saw there to cut through the angle So there we are, that's the final cut, all four of them are done. The finished article. Just got to figure out what colour to paint it now. It's testing time now, let's see how much weight she holds. There you go, solid as a rock. Well, it's bound to hold my weight. I'm only 10 stone wet through. Give or take a few pounds. Okay, a few stone. All right, I'm 15 stone. And that's all the scrap timber. I'll grant you the 3B2 with stuff I had lying around. The gaps there between the timber should allow any water that gets in to drain away. There we are, done and dusted, and I'm quite proud of myself for doing that. It took quite a bit of pondering in certain times with uh, measuring up and cutting wrong. I had to rejig quite a lot of stuff because of that. All in all, the, it was a relatively easy project. There are things that would change if I did it again. I might just raise the cross members um, just a bit further off the roof. I don't want to use massive timbers, they're just heavy weight 
but we'll have to wait and see on that it all depends on how it performs um, in overall the construction we left gaps between the timber to allow a good airflow uh, I'm thinking of using a plastic um, coated tarpaulin type thing to go over the top with some bungee cord round just to keep things dry in there even though the plastic will uh, promote a bit of condensation um, the airflow through the sides and underneath should help to dry it out fairly quickly now I haven't built this box just so I could film it and put it out on the channel we actually do need this box um, in the winter time we can put coal in it and bits of wood and timber and things like that and in the summer time we can put our barbecue stuff and our deck chairs that we'll be sitting outside on the towpath with now for cutting those 4x2 timbers with that curve within it I used my father-in-law's antique bandsaw which as I've said before is he lives in the land time before health and safety it's a bit of a death trap but we managed to do it if you're using a jigsaw here's a handy hint for you if you feel like the blade is really struggling to get through the timber take it out throw it away put a new one in there's nothing worse than trying to chew your way through a piece of timber with a dull blade especially a dull jigsaw blade you might as well gnaw it with your teeth it'd be much quicker i'll keep you posted on how the box performs and if i get managed to get around to putting the tarpaulin on fairly soon we'll let you know how that goes as well we're reckoning on the um the box lasting anywhere between seven to ten years probably five at the minimum um, and the tarpaulin well, i think probably four to five years for the tarpaulin on top but we'll see how it goes i'll keep you posted and that brings me to consider is it really worth the money well i got most of the timber from wix i thought i'd get through there and some of it was on offer and i did get a little bit of a discount there but any builders merchants will probably be around about the same price give or take a pound or two if you're not too um you know confident we're going into builders merchants then stick with the you know the little uh, diy centers and if you can go local you might pay a bit more but it's better for the community in the whole i'm not overly keen on using massive big conglomerates myself big multinational companies i'd rather spend money with a little man locally i mean the total cost for me from the wits was around about well it was just under 100 pounds really including the screws and i had two bits of scrap timber which i had off a job anyway so they didn't really cost anything um uh, the timber might be a bit cheaper now because timber prices have dropped i did it i bought it in december i think and it was still quite high at the time it had dropped a little bit but timber's gone up about 40 50 percent last year and it's only just starting to come down now really now before you all rush off and find something better to do let's answer that question we asked right at the beginning of this video can he perform a perfect dismount perfect dismount that as we bring this video to a close let's look forward to what's coming in next week's video here's a sneaky peek oh that's a bit leaky if you've made it this far thanks for watching if you enjoyed it why don't you give it a thumbs up subscribe if you want to see more and if you click that little bell icon youtube or my dear next time we release one well that's everything on my list i reckon we'll call it a draw for this one till next time